welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to look at Plasma 6, the latest version of KDE's popular Linux desktop environment. To test Plasma 6, we're going to be running the KDE Neon Linux distribution. So let's go and get started. Right, here we are on the website for the KDE community, which is an international team that develops and distributes free open source software. As we can see, KDE published a Plasma desktop that's the subject of this video, but they also make a range of applications, and if we scroll down we can see some of these, not least including the Critter painting program, fantastic piece of software, I've got a video all about Critter, and then below this we've got the Caden Live video editor. And talking of Caden Live, Caden Live 24 has just been released, and we'll be looking at this on the channel fairly soon. However, sticking with the subject of this video, let's scroll back up to the, uh, the Plasma desktop. There it is, and in fact, we'll scroll down straight after that and click on Install on your computer. And this gets us to a list of popular Linux distributions which use the Plasma desktop and KDE application. And as we can see, these include Kubuntu, KDE with Ubuntu, they include OpenSUSE, and they also include a bit further down here, we've got Fedora KDE, there it is, and also Manjaro KDE. However, in this video, we're going to test out Plasma 6 using KDE Neon, the one I went straight past, there it is, and KDE Neon is a rolling or constantly updated Linux distro that's based on Ubuntu, and which showcases KDE software exactly as the developers intended it. Because it's constantly updated, KDE Neon is suitable for adventurous KDE enthusiasts who want to experience the latest KDE software as soon as it's available. So let's just uh, scroll down a little bit more and click on uh, Learn More to learn more about KDE Neon. There we are. And if we now click on Download Now, we find various live images. And earlier, I wrote the user edition to a USB drive using Belena Etcher. And I used the USB drive to install KDE Neon on a J4105 test system. And the install I can report was a very straightforward, stylish, and painless process. And indeed, if I now minimize our browser, guess what? Here we are running KDE Neon with the Plasma 6 desktop. And it's all rather lovely and very exciting indeed. Right, let's take a look around. And here we are running the default configuration of a Linux desktop that I think will also be pretty familiar to a Windows user. And personally, I've always thought that Plasma is a really beautiful desktop interface, as well as one that I really like because it provides a very high level of user control without having to install extensions. So for example, here in Plasma 6, if we open up the Settings app, we find it's been improved to make it even more user-friendly. For example, there are fewer nested pages, but we've still got lots of user control of every aspect of the interface. There really is a great deal here that can be changed and tweaked, and a lot more than we can alter in, for example, a standard GNOME Linux desktop or in Windows 10 or Windows 11. If we look under Themes, which is just uh, down here under Appearance and Style, there we are. The default theme is called Breeze, and this has been updated to have a more modern look and feel with fewer frames and more consistent spacing. If we want to apply a theme, we can just click on it. Let's click on, for example, Breeze Dark like that and we get a choice of what gets applied, and this can be down to a very specific level. Let's just apply everything here like that. As we can see, we've now got the dark theme, which is, uh, well, darker. But let's just go back and uh, go back to the light theme. Let's be wild like that. There we go. And we can also get lots of new themes, and indeed, we'll come back and explore some very special themes a bit later in the video. But just to show you the kind of settings we've got in themes, we can control colors and accents, things like that. We can control the application style. Lots of things can be edited here. We can put frames back in if we want them. Scroll bars, transparency. There's just a lot of settings here in Plasma 6 where we can change what they call the Plasma style. We can change window decorations. Again, there's lots of things we can alter here. I just like having this level of, of user control. As in most Linux distros, we can also control icons. We can control cursors. 
we've got the ability to pick custom sound themes, and indeed the default sound theme is now called Ocean rather than Oxygen, although Oxygen is still available. Also, under Appearance and Style, if we just go back there, we can change fonts, we can control every font element in the user interface, just like you can't in Windows 10 or 11. And I also find it great that font management for the computer is in the same tab. That's just a nice little touch. Also here we can control wallpapers. There's lots of fantastic new wallpapers included. Shall we pick a different one? Shall we pick that one? That looks pretty wacky. Let's apply that. Oh yes, that's an exciting, wacky new wallpaper. And it's worth noting if you're using multiple monitors, which I'm not here, you can configure different wallpapers on different displays. This all said, there are a few visual inconsistencies. For example, here in settings, our menu is a hamburger type menu up there. And that's the same, for example, if we go to the Dolphin File Manager. There it is. This also uses a hamburger menu here on the right, like that, rather than the one leftish in system settings. But if I launch something else, let's go to, for example, Utilities and the Kate Advanced Text Editor. This uses normal menus, and I do find this slightly strange. I think they should be consistent to use either normal menus or hamburger menus. Ideally, not hamburger menus. Normal menus, I think, are better. Or an even nicer option would be to provide a choice of menu styles somewhere in the system settings. Down at the bottom of the screen, let's just close these for a second. There they are. We have the panel, which, as you can see, now floats by default. Although, if you actually run up a window which touches it, like we just had like that, it actually stops floating. Or if we maximize the window again, the panel stops floating. Although, as I'm sure you guessed, there's control of this. If we go down here, we can enter Edit Mode, where we've got lots of control of the panel. We can turn off floating if we want to, like that, and put it back again if we wish. But we can also, for example, change things like the width. We could, for example, just fit the content, which gives us more like a traditional dock effect. And we can also change the position. We could put the position, for example, over here. We've now got our dock over there. We could also change the position of that. Although personally, I think I'm going to stick with the fit height and then go back to a position and put it down back at the bottom, as I like quite a traditional panel. And it's also worth noting here, we've got a lot of options for visibility, as you can see, always visible, auto hide, etc. Final thing to note with the panel, so if you go down to the bottom and we right click, we can show alternatives. And this allows us to change the style of the panel. So for example, we could have a more task manager style like that. Although I think we'll, uh, we'll stick with the default icons only task manager. In terms of other changes in Plasma 6, KDE have chosen to make double click the default. So for example, in the Dolphin file manager, we just open it up. We have to uh, double click to open up a folder like that. Although if you're a Linux diehard, you want to use single click, you can change back to that in the settings. And here in the file manager, let's just uh, minimize it like that. There have been some accessibility improvements, like, for example, the ability to press F10 to open up the menu. There we are, rather exciting. And it's also possible now to right click a folder and to open in a split view, which is a rather handy thing to be able to do. Other changes here in Plasma 6 include support for HDR games. Some people will really welcome that. And we've also had improvements in the spectacle screen recording utility, which is uh, over here. There we are. And here we can now capture or record not just a full screen or a window, but also a rectangular region, just as we've been able to do for some time now in other Linux desktop environments. It's also worth noting that the software manager has been updated. You've probably guessed that. It's called Discover. Here it is down here. Let's see what we can discover. And uh, there we are. So despite what some Linux haters like to say, it's perfectly possible to use this desktop and install applications without going near the terminal. Finally, for those interested in changes under the hood, if we go back to settings and we go all the way down to the bottom of settings to about this system, we can see that Plasma 6 has adopted Wayland as its default graphics platform, although X11 is still supported. Plasma 6 has also transitioned from Qt5 to the Qt6 GUI toolkit and has launched with the new KDE Framework 6 libraries, as well as the KDE Gear 2402 applications in what KDE term a mega release. And this is all explained on a web page. You're probably not surprised to hear that. And uh, here we are on this very page. It is a mega release. 
and this explains exactly what is going on, but in short, the key thing to note is that pretty much all of the software technology behind the scenes has been updated. And without getting into a debate about why KDE has different names for different aspects of the same desktop environment, and uh, why they have different numbering systems for these aspects, let's move on to the next segment of the video. Greetings! Here I am back again. I've been playing with the settings and I now want to show you a few specific features that have caught my attention. And the first of these is the task switcher, where if I press Alt and Tab, we get the task switcher like that. By default, it's got a grid view, as we can see. But if we go to system settings, where I have increased the font size so we can see things more clearly, we can see there are lots of different options, the thumbnail grid, etc. But we've also got, for example, compact like that. If we apply that and I go back to Alt Tab, we get a little compact view like that. And uh, I don't particularly like having show selected window. Let's get rid of that and uh, apply that. And that will just bring us a little list like that, which seems to be uh, OK. We've also got a cover switch. Let's just show you that one. And uh, whoa, that's pretty wacky, isn't it? That's the sort of thing that looks great the first time you use it. And if you keep using it, it drives you absolutely insane. But uh, there it is. We've also got down here flip switch, which is fairly similar. Let's just uh, show you that like uh, that and uh, back to a task switcher. We've also got large icons. I think this is probably my favorite large icons like that is uh, all I think we really need. That's a nice way of uh, switching windows. And then finally here we've got sidebar, which uh, for me is just bizarre to have them on the side. But uh, there we are. You can do that if you want. Or we can go back to the, uh, the thumbnail grid which uh, we've now got, of course, without the uh, showing of the particular windows. But uh, for me, I think I'm going to go back to the uh, large icons like that. And uh, that, I think, is an excellent task switcher. So having seen how we can switch tasks, let's now turn to switching workspaces, which here in Plasma are called virtual desktops. And to use virtual desktops, you first have to go to settings and then from settings, you need to go to window management and guess what? Virtual desktops. And as you can see here, I've created two virtual desktops until you've created at least one extra desktop. You can't work with virtual desktops. Let's create another one. Let's call this one. I don't know. We'll call that uh, Kevin the Hamster. That's the obvious name for a desktop. Uh, I think like that. And you mustn't forget to apply. And we've now got four desktops accessible here on the taskbar, which we can go between like that, which is a uh, very exciting. Or we can also switch between them using control and the function keys. So I can press control F2, F3, F4, F1, etc. Alternatively, if you want to be very graphical, you can go to desktop effects. And under desktop effects, and there's massive effects you can work with here. There is so much you can control here in a Plasma 6. But if we keep going down, somewhere down here, I will find there it is under window management. We have cube. We can turn on the cube. We can configure the cube if we want to with a, how it's accessed, for example, is via a, initially meta C, which means the super key, the Windows key and C. But uh, we'll accept that for now and also we'll apply our changes. And if I now press meta and C, there we are, a cube has come up. I've now released the key. We can now move around this as much as we want to, having a really exciting time, and select the workspace we want to use. And I have to admit, I never work with workspaces. It's not something that's part of the way I use computers. But the cube, this thing here, is something that was removed in Plasma 5.23. But in Plasma 6, it's back, which will make some people very happy indeed. Now, if your personal wetware is working reliably, you'll recall that earlier I said we'd return to themes. And as you can see, I've now got a wacky theme working. This is a theme that makes Plasma 6 look like a Windows XP, which I think is a rather cool bit of fun. Not sure I'd use it all the time, but this is a rather cool. And if we go into system settings, I'll show you how I did this. Here we are, we'll go down to colors and themes. And you'll see I've now got a theme called Expose, which makes things look like Windows XP. It didn't actually include the background. I added the background myself, but it is a uh, rather cool. 
and all I had to do was to uh, get new up here and this shows us various themes we can install. These aren't from KDE itself, they've been created by users and shared which is a uh, to be nice to them and to give full disclosure I've had a lot of problems trying to install different themes and make them work. We have to remember that Plasma 6 is still very new, it's only a few weeks from release as I'm making this video so there are still some bugs to be ironed out and I'm sure they will be gone long before it becomes a mainstream desktop. But uh, I have got things to work as you can see I've installed this theme, the Expose theme. There's also a theme down here which is makes things look like Windows 7, where's that gone? That's a 7 arrow. I can't get that one to work at the moment but I will uh, persevere. But uh, anyway, I thought you might like to see you can do all kinds of things in terms of configuration in Plasma 6, including giving it the feel of a classic Windows release. Plasma 6 is a beautiful Linux desktop that offers the user full control of their working environment and which I'm sure will soon be included with an increasing number of Linux distros. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Hello.